Jasperson. I live near Enderby, BC. Um, I've done the 12 by 12 show with uh, Chris McClure uh, two years ago. Um, and I've known him kind of before that, just um, uh, kind of casually, but, you know, as an artist um, and, and kind of a peer that, that I liked. So I did the 12 by 12 show um, and all my pieces sold the first night of that show two years ago like within the first 15 minutes of the really? show opening. Wow. Yeah, yeah, nice. it, was, it was absolutely fabulous. Um, I didn't have time last year to do it because I was moving. Um, I, I lived in Alberta all my life. And- How long have you been painting? I've been painting full time for the past 17 years so, and make my living with, with my art. I, I was down um, to the coast in the summer and happened to come down to White Rock just on my way back home and ended up just running into Chris and Marilyn. I didn't realize that they had opened a studio. So, so he invited me back for the show this fall again. Great. So, so that was exciting. Yeah, so what's the secret if you can sell out <laughs> the first <laughs> two minutes? Yeah, I don't, you, I don't can know. Can you share a secret <laughs> yeah, with everyone else? <laughs> Well, the, the pieces were different to everybody else's, for sure. Um, were they? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So and were they in the style that we see behind you? This yes, is your work. Yes. That, uh, yeah, they were. Behind you. Yeah. So it's in this style, but in a 12-inch by 12-inch format. Yes. Is it hard to do that? Small? For me, it is right now, yes. I, I do better on a bigger surface, so I have to really... Um, concentrate on on simplicity if I'm working something that small to keep it this so that it feels the same right because I can see you have large chunks of color mm -hmm. it's large swaths instead of finely detailed so reducing it to a 12 by 12 yeah you, st you still have to keep it in 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 those big um, patterns of color and, and chunks yeah. Because otherwise it won't it won't feel like the same work. Uh, most people don't don't understand um, if if it's not like totally realistic. So so you do have have that where where they're not going to understand these pieces because they they aren't realistic. They're still they're still based on something, but they're painted in a way that they're not. Um, they're not a, a picture or like a photograph. Right. What type of influences did you have as you know, growing up? Uh, did you always perceive yourself or envision yourself as being an artist? Is that something? That, you know, no, early? not as a child because I wasn't exposed to art at, at that particular time in my life. Mm -hmm. um, I, I did have a passion for it somehow. Um, I started to draw at an early age. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it wasn't encouraged um, because it was something that was just not even entertained um, yeah. in, in the family that I grew up. So, so later in life, you, you found some inspiration. Was it a uh, was it a time thing uh, where you had time on your hands and you decided to play with it and then became more involved? Or? It's not so much time. Uh, it was just like every, everything I saw seemed to to feel like it should be, you know, somehow recorded or or shown on a canvas. And so then I started, you know, looking at artists and um, art and discovered the group of seven actually that they would be my biggest influence oh, really? yeah Tom Thompson and, and any of the group of seven I started taking some private lessons and and didn't, uh, I, didn't I don't think I tried to emulate them at that point I was just learning you know color theory and, and basics to put a painting together like composition and, and things like that. So then, then it was a matter of um, just working at it, um, you know, painting and learning and, 
and you have to paint lots to to learn how to put it on there. Yeah. Did you have mentors as you were going through the early stages? Did you work with people? I did work with a few people, but uh, I had a really good teacher that was was really kind and had had um, good color theory and, and training behind her. So uh, that that really helped give me a solid foundation. Well, as you invest more time, that's when your style uh, comes out because you've you've you know tried a million different things by that time, and you know what works for you. Because what what works for me isn't going to work for the next person. Parts of it may, but but not all of it. So you you need to invest a lot of time to, to get. To that point, it did. I don't think it came like overnight, like that, like that that it that it hit me that you know these were distinctive. It just it just kind of happened, and then um, as I did shows and stuff, I could see that 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 the work felt you know really consistent. And as I put groups of work together to go to a gallery or or whatever other shows I was doing then then I could see because as I'm doing them I don't I don't see them like that I'm, I'm still I'm still looking at them with you know a critical eye as to what what I need to do to correct something in them so, so it takes me um, I need to get away from them to to actually see them painting I just did a um, a residency in California uh, and I found there because I'm doing everything on location and, and painting what I see and when I do that I kind of forget what I'm doing and, and think that I have to uh, paint it more representational like what it is and and then it I, I don't feel that good about it because it's not it's not at the level where I'm painting at, like like these pieces. Okay. So so I'm kind of forgetting myself and 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 not putting that artistic imp, you know impression into it, uh, where it's looser and freer and and not so representational. A, a different area brings uh, like I I know already from this trip uh, different colors. Right. Because there's the, the, the blue greens that um, we just don't get here, and that the desert scenes, like like the, the, the color is just just so different. Yeah. 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 The sky even looks. Mm -hmm. different. Yeah. Yeah. I can hardly wait to get <laughs> painting. It's like I haven't, cause I, cause I just got back, and then I had to get ready to come to this show, and it's like I haven't had time to paint, right? And it's like, oh, I'm just just dying to get to the studio to get to work. So, and then this this was done in my garden uh, this summer actually. Okay, yeah. I've been dying to ask you what what are the what are the flowers? Sunflowers. The sunflowers. Yeah. 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 Uh, so that's your garden. That's your personal yeah. space. Yeah. That's yeah. special. Uh -huh. I've, yeah, and I literally that that's a bit large to paint on location, but I did um, take it out on a took a big studio easel outside and, oh, okay. and set it up in the yard. Nice. So, yeah. <laughs> That's the way to do it. Yeah, and what else, uh, what other influences do we have here? Uh, so, uh, that, that piece there was done on location as well. Okay. Now these pieces I have managed to maintain my style working on location, which is, is really, really good. That's that's what you want to do. I see. Okay. Yeah. So, so you want to keep it, you know, that simple. But it's hard to do because it's it's like you're there and you want to make it look like exactly like that, which yeah. which you're not going to ever do anyway. You know, even a photograph is that actually abstracted because it's not the real thing. As as the pieces developed, um, the sales got stronger too. So um, I've had people following my work from from the beginning. Now some of those people don't like what I'm doing now. That that's just that's going to happen too. So they find it too abstract. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that so that's a that's always a, a difficult decision for a business person. Yeah. When you find a product that people like, you just keep selling it to them, and you try not to modify it too much. But yeah. as an artist, that's not that's not how we work. That's not how our minds work and our inspiration works. Um, you don't want to stay the same. You you, you want to grow. I think you need to do things from the heart, and if you do, you you gain more in, in the end. You, you lose a few, yes, but you're going to gain more from it in the end. Right. It's not that I, I totally make a point of painting all the time. I need to paint all the time. If I don't, I don't feel right. <laughs> so um, I, I have to paint. Art is an obsession. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I've done, I actually did a series of poems that go with um, some of my paintings, and I've, I've meant to do more. I just, I just, somehow it hasn't had priority because yeah. each painting actually has a bit of a story. So that story incorporated, uh, is, I, I did manage to put it into to words with, with a group of them, so, and then did put it together in a book. Um, after last night, you think the writing might have more of a priority? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can it. write. It just yeah. I, I do have trouble with words, so I have I have to make a conscious effort of like what I do is put it down in point form yeah. and then refine it. It, it. But it takes me probably a lot longer than somebody that, that is a writer. Yeah, I don't do stuff place. for extended periods, but I've done stuff where I've gone to like Toronto, to the Toronto International uh, Art Fair. Um, I've come to Vancouver to, for different shows. Uh, you know, I do plein air events wherever I can. In Canada, there's, there's not uh, a lot of um, shows that are geared just for visual art. Um, Canada really lacks in that. There, there is, you know, some like the Calgary Stampede, but then it's it's more geared to Western art. Now that's changed a little bit over the last few years, where they they are looking at more abstract works. And I do show with them, uh, you know, over the years. It's like, I wondered how it really fit, because it didn't fit, right. you know, because they're, they're doing, you know, the horses and the cows, and I mean, I do horses and cows, but not uh, not in that realistic sense. Of, right. you know. It's abstract, they have to yeah. be able to yeah. have a vision to see yeah. what's going on. But I, ironically, I, I've done well there too, so, I think people that are looking for art usually know no quality when they see it too. So, right. yeah. how um, the people who, who follow you? How, how do they do that? Do you, do you email them, mail them? Or do they follow you on Facebook or anything? Uh, how do you stay in touch with you? Uh, I, I have been really good over the years to, to keep a, an extensive mailing list. Um, now I know that seems a bit old fashioned, but I s still have been doing that up until yeah. till th this year. So a combination of that, I have a website and I have Facebook that I do have people following me on that. Um, I do, I, ha I have been fortunate that I have some really good collectors that, uh, one couple comes to mind right now that They bought a ton of my work, and they continue to. They, they came to visit me just a couple of months ago, and there's two pieces hanging in my studio right now that are sold to them. Um, one piece wasn't even finished at the point at that point in time. That's why it's still in my studio. Yeah. Um, and and they buy pieces that are gifts for other people and stuff too. Isn't that nice? mm -hmm. How how important is a relationship like that? It's. Um well, we've we've become friends too, so so it's 
it, it's a really, really important relationship. They, they'd done a show for me in Toronto at their flat and invited all their friends and stuff over to, to, to look at my art and stuff. And, you know, I, I did like $15,000 worth of sales in one day, right? Yeah. It's all a bit crazy when I started because I quit a regular job and uh, <laughs> bought a commercial property in a little town, Alberta, and set up a studio gallery space. And I don't know what I was thinking because <laughs> A week after, I thought, oh my God, <laughs> what, what have I done? <laughs> but, but then I just, I realized, well, I'm here, so y you just make it work. You, you do what you have to, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I don't think many artists think that they'll have such devoted fans follow their careers forever. I, I, I don't think we think about that in the beginning. I mean, we no. don't get how important that is. There is a connection for sure. Um, yeah, I've had people that, that, that have bought pieces that had tears in their eyes. It, it moved them that much. Yeah. You know, and that's when you know that, that, that you're connected because you've done that piece for somebody that, that you don't even know that's out there. So, so I believe each piece belongs to somebody, it's just finding that somebody, you know, it might not be today, it might be, you know, five years from now, but there is somebody for each one of these pieces. Yeah. Well, I can, I can see a, a shift in how art is promoted, for sure, that um, you do need to be using social media and, and other things because you know, shows and galleries are, well, shows in Canada have never been there to start with, but, but galleries, there's less and less, which, you know, you, you need places to show, so. Yeah. Why is it so hard for artists to, to evolve their business since? Well, I think some of them don't, don't work as hard as they should at it and just expect that that it should just be there. Yeah. You can't do that. You, you have to put yeah. something into it. Yeah. Well, creating probably should be about 80, well, you know, it should be marketing as much as you are creating. Is it hard to do that? Well, for me personally as an artist, I, I would rather just be creating. I, I'd rather forget about the rest of it. <laughs> I don't want to do my books. I don't want to, you know, but but I do. Yeah. But but really it's like, you know, I'd rather just go yeah. with my paint somewhere all day. I'd be fine, right? Yeah. Every once in a while I'll I'll bite the bullet and dedicate some time to, you know, trying to find other avenues and I'm usually fr pretty successful at doing that. I just need to maybe concentrate a little bit more on it. So, yeah. Where where do you look where do you look for new opportunities? I have been mostly working with galleries um, the past few years. Uh, Local galleries. Uh, well, I I need to work on Vancouver and Victoria are my my next um, my next ones for sure. Yeah. I have been uh, kind of targeting. A, a gallery in Kelowna, they, they know my work and stuff now, so I, I think with a bit of time I will be in there. Yeah. So it's just, it's just kind of timing too, because they get hit with, you know, a million artists that, and they already carry a bunch, so, so it's just a matter of hitting the right time when they have a space. I, I got one in the fall uh, and it was perfect timing because I was closing my, my studio gallery, I, I just finally sold it. And I was kind of needing something else. Well, I, I probably need like five more to, to make up for the one that I just closed. They picked me up, they actually called me. Uh, I'd been following them on Facebook and I, I know the, the gallery owner and he, so he called me up and said, oh, you know, would you consider showing in our gallery? Yeah. 
And I was like, yeah, and, and it was just perfect. I was, I was going back to Alberta at the time and put together a batch of work and delivered it, right? Like the next day kind of thing. Yeah. So it, it just happened in the, in the right time. Right. Um, and they've done really fabulous with my work. They've been selling work every month. Um, and they even commissioned me to do a few pieces for a client, big pieces too. So. We're going to start all over. What would you do differently this time around? I don't know that there is anything I would do a lot differently because it, uh, having a studio gallery space, um, the fact that I was always there, uh, people would come back because they would be like, oh, well, I can stop by there and see Mary Ann, like, and then see what she's up to, right? Whereas if it's just, if the work's just in a gallery, it's like, well, who is that artist, you know? What do they look like? What, what do they do? Like, is, is this all they do? Do they do something else? They, they don't really know, right? Whereas when you're always there, they see you working. And, and I, think, um, I think a lot of them responded to the fact that I was always working and always painting. It's like, wow. Exactly. She's yeah. always at work. She's yeah. always painting. Like, how can she do that? Like, yeah. you know? Dedication, mm -hmm. passion for. Yeah, and that's, um, would you have opened a studio gallery earlier, is that what you're saying? Earlier than you did? Maybe yeah, just probably, into that yeah, room? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I would have taken the chance a lot earlier, had I known it would be, yeah. you know, so good. Uh, I always just found, even in economic bad times, so to speak, uh, that that's when people were, were really kind and, and looked for, you know, art that meant something. They didn't just go out and buy whatever they found in some big store somewhere that, that matched their furniture. They went and looked for something that, that meant something to them. Yeah. And I always did, did really well in those times.